straight to the Tamarind tree where we find the party leader of Chama Chamashinani, Isaac Ruto, patiently waiting. Sir, thank you so much for your time. Apologies for the delay, but we appreciate your time. Let me go straight to it. Look, in 2017, you, CCM, were very critical of the Jubilee government coming in, in, in the run-up to the election. You were very critical. Today, you made an about turn. What is this? What, explain to us, what is this agreement about? That is democracy at work. We are taking democracy to a new level. Remember, in the past, we have always criminalized opposition, which is not the right thing. Oh. So now mm -hmm. we are saying we are cooperating with the government of the day to, to improve the lives of Kenyans and deliver development. And that is the essence of political parties. Okay, let me ask you this. Why the, now? Why now? And yeah. what is this cooperation agreement about? Uh, it's now because it's now. It couldn't be yesterday. It can only be today. <laughs> yes, and uh, the cooperation uh, is about ensuring that we are able to maintain a united country, that we are able to move forward together, that we can share uh, on political ideas, including the improvement of the constitution, and uh, we ensure that economic growth does happen even after the COVID uh, scare. You know what? Uh, that is hardly convincing to most people who think that this cooperation is because there's a looming cabinet reshuffle and you could be in it. I think that those are just stories. We only see them in newspapers. You can't, uh, you can't start uh, writing what the president could be thinking about. That is his province. Ours is to deal with the issues of the day and ensure there is a peaceful country for everyone. Okay, a few weeks ago, you were spotted getting off a helicopter, heading to a high-level meeting. Right, and I think, Jeff, you've spotted me in helicopters uh, more than once, <laughs> including when you're inside one. <laughs> okay, are you, are you denying that you were heading to a high-level meeting? No, I've been to so many meetings, I can't tell which one you are talking about. Okay, let me be more specific. Were you offered yes. a cabinet position when you came for that high-level meeting? No, we've not discussed those issues. Uh, we have been discussing issues that are more pertinent for everyone. Okay, like what? Including uh, building bridges initiative, change, uh, looking at constitutional review. Remember, this has been uh, a matter I have been on since 2013. The building, you, do, you mentioned building bridges initiative. The task, task force ends its tenure at the end of this month. Is that why we're seeing a realigning of parties so that everything can be passed smoothly through parliament? Not necessarily. You know, the path towards constitutional changes is clearly defined in the constitution. And the path is very clear. Those matters that require a referendum will go to the referendum, with or without a huge majority in parliament. You, you can't change Article, I think, 254, which defines when you are dealing with specific areas, including parliament, including the executive, including devolution, some of those things just have to go through a referendum. The people must approve. Okay, let me come back to the cabinet. If you were offered a cabinet position, would you take it? Uh, Jeff, I think that is neither here nor there. Uh, Remember, cabinet placements and all that is the prerogative of the president. Okay, it was rumored when you came for your meeting and were offered that cabinet position, you said no, because there's only two years to the next election. 
Are you denying you said that? Uh, it was rumored, and I think you've answered the question. Rumors are very plentiful in Nairobi. <laughs> Especially in the newspapers and the corridors of journalism. <laughs> and I don't want to, to, to go too close to where you are, where you are Jeff. <laughs> okay, let me ask you this. <laughs> are, you yes. are you supporting President Uhuru Kenyatta because he has seemingly fallen out with his deputy who is a nemesis of yours i supported uhuru kenyatta as soon as uh, the elections were over uh, because he gave me a very clear vision of what he expects to achieve in these five years and i agreed with him and i was the first one to do a handshake at the Kapkatet. he told me that he intends to ensure there remains peace and in fact, he asked me whether uh, we, I can still remember 207 and whether it, uh, we, Kenya would be comfortable with that sort of uh, situation. And I agreed with him, we need peace. And uh, I, I also agree with him that we have to form a, a culture in which after every election, the competitors do a handshake and ensure Kenyans are able to go about their own business as usual. And we allow children to grow and go to school, everybody to do business. Remember, Jeff, that uh, for the first time in several years, we are not having stones being thrown around in Nairobi every other three months. Yes, I think uh, that in itself is a good idea. Uh, this is the first president to say uh, we don't have to criminalize opposition. You can disagree with him, but he is not going to criminalize you. So what is the, where, where, where has he gone wrong on that? Why, why can't he be supported on that? Why can't we move forward as a country that is civilized? Political parties are meant to participate in governance, but not to subvert government. Yeah, but you've been out in the cold for yeah, three our years. Why is to, now? Why now? I have not been in any cold, Jeff. Okay, we are two years to the next election. Come on, you know, we have to read between the lines here. Yes. No, now, two years towards, uh, to the next election means uh, we all have to be active now and contribute to ensure that the next elections remain peaceful. Remember that this will be a period in which there will be a transition. Remember the president serves for 10 years according to the current constitution mm -hmm. and uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is uh, going to hand over to the next uh, government and we expect Kenya to continue peacefully. We expect after the election, the next day, uh, Jeff, you will be in the studios and you will be on your element. <laughs> Speaking of element, uh, so Wiper, yourself, CCM, Kanu have all signed agreements with Jubilee. ODM is working with Jubilee under BBI. And we all sliding yes. very comfortably into one, a one-party state. Eyes wide open. Never. We are not moving towards that. When you are talking about cooperation, it is a political party and another political party discussing issues. And we have agreed on uh, various programs that needs to be pursued in the next two years. We have also agreed that this country must remain peaceful and a member of the Committee of Nations that is civilized. Um, but we have never discussed the possibility of dissolving any parties. Remember, I have been a very serious critic of a possibility of anyone being cajoled into dissolving uh, political parties. Because we must develop political parties that have ideologies, that have clear programs, and they are uh, understood and we must remove tribal tagging.
Okay, let me ask you this. I mean, these agreements, are they for personal gain? Are they for public good? Because how is it going to help Chama Chamashinani? How is it going to help you all? Yeah, it is for public good. For example, Chama Chamashinani now gets a, a platform to continue pushing the policies that they have always felt ought to be adopted. For example, we stand for a stronger divorce system, stable county governments, and um, guaranteed methodologies of ensuring the public participate in governance and that no area remains uh, marginalized like has happened in the past. We want every part of this country to feel as one. Okay, uh, a, while, a short while ago you, you mentioned tribal tagging. Let me ask you this. There's been talk about expand, expanding the executive ostensibly to achieve what they call inclusivity in government. Would you support such a proposal? Yes, that's correct. It's, it's the best thing. You, you have to have inclusivity. It is a country of diversity. And uh, the Constitution recognizes our diverse cultures and diverse traditions. And it is therefore essential that all shades of opinion feel part of government, including the very minorities. And that was the essence of our Constitution when we were making it. Okay, other, other than that, yes. what would you want the BBI task force to a prioritize on? I expect the BBI uh, task force to prioritize, in my view, first of all, strengthening of devolution and guaranteeing uh, rights of Kenyans, and then opening up the top. I would uh, personally support uh, a hybrid uh, system between a hybrid between parliamentary system of government and the presidential. Because Kenyans continue, uh, they still insist on uh, electing their president. At the same time, we expect members of parliament to play a bigger role. And the members of the county assembly should play a bigger role uh, in the management of affairs in their own counties. So that we don't have this instability. That seems to be um, the order of the day in the various counties. Mm. I'm going to come to the counties in a little short while, but uh, just to confirm, you, you would support a ceremonial president, a powerful prime minister, deputy president, two deputy prime ministers, that line up? Not exactly a, a ceremonial president. A president that has, still has a role to play in the management of the affairs of the country. For example, if you were to ask me, in one of my proposals, I made it, uh, we made it under Eschama Chamachinani that uh, we expect the president to continue being commander-in-chief of the armed forces, in charge of internal security, in charge of foreign affairs. I would also propose that he continues to handle ministries that are less political, like environment, lands, uh, and such like. But uh, the ministries uh, which... In Kiswali, you would say, Utendachu Akazi. Nikazi, a prime minister, he must answer daily in parliament to the progress or the failings of his government and therefore continued uh, consultation and uh, accountability to the people's rep representatives. Okay, I'm sure you've already looked towards 2022. Are you going to run for president? Uh, we have all agreed that for now, let us stop the politicking. Let us address the issues that are important right now. The important thing that, is, uh, that, that needs to be addressed at the moment is the fact that we are only in the middle of a pandemic. At the same time, our economy is facing serious challenges. Uh, the, a lot of uh, workers are losing their jobs or having half salary. The economy is not growing. Yet the demands continue to remain the same. Yeah, I just want. I to, don't I, think there is uh, any urgency in talking about who, uh, the elections of 2022. Okay, that doesn't answer my question at all. I just wanted a yes or no. Will you run for president or even governor? Yes or no? Uh, there is no yes or no answer in politics, except when you are voting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeff, you, you join our trade and then you will, you will understand. <laughs> no, 
I think I'll if you want yes or no, I suggest you you meet with Socion and uh, the TSC commissioner. I think I'll stay exactly He'll where I am. He'll give you a job where the answers are yes and no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a break, but when I come back, I want to ask you about the Talai elders who recently endorsed William Ruto as the presidential candidate for 2022. They've, they've literally, they've endorsed him. I want to ask your thoughts about that. And also, Governor Ann Waiguru, in hot soup or not, you are governor, what will be your advice? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that after the break. <laughs> Yes or no answer, he says. <laughs> Keep tweeting at Koinanga Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag is JK Live. We'll be back with Chama Chamashinani, leader, party leader, Isaac Ruto, in a moment.